In this tutorial, I'm going to walk you through all of the options in the free Astra theme. Every single one. I'm pretty sure I cover every single option in the free theme itself. And that's pretty awesome. So if you're thinking of using Astra, you're not sure if you want it or if you need help using a certain feature, make sure you check out this video. If you have any questions or comments, please leave them down below this video. I try to answer everyone, but sometimes I just can't. So hopefully I'll be able to answer yours. My name is Bjorn Allpass from WP Learning Lab, where we help you get better at WordPress. You can earn more for yourself, for your clients, and for your business. If you haven't done so yet, please make sure you click subscribe and ring the bell so you don't miss any of my future videos. And we're getting started on this Astra theme video right now. The first thing we have to do is get the free version of the Astra theme. To do that, head over to the link in the description down below or just type it in the address bar wplearninglab.com, which is my website, forward slash Astra one. And that will take you to the Astra website right here. Then we just click on download now. It takes us to the pricing page. There's a special 10% offer right now for the pro versions. There are multiple pro versions, as you can see. I've linked to a playlist down below this video, which is the pro version, Astra Pro playlist, that goes through all the features and, and things and how to use things in the pro versions. So if you do get the pro version, check out that playlist. Today, we're all about free. I'm going to click on download free right here. We just enter our name and our email address, and we're added to their list so we're notified when there's sales, like the sale that's on today and notified of all kinds of other things that are important for Astra users. So just enter that, click on subscribe and download, or just click on, no thanks, I just wanna download Astra. So either one of those work. Once it's downloaded to our hard drive, we head back into our site, and we go to our dashboard, and we go to appearance and themes, click on add new, click on upload theme, we find our Astra theme files, which is right here, we drag and drop them right here, or we can click on choose file. It opens up a hard drive browser and you can choose from there. Click on install once you have that done and then click on activate and that will activate the theme. If we go back to our front end, not much has changed. Instead of a blank 2019 theme, we now have a blank Astra theme, which can be a little bit intimidating when you start with a blank website, you're not used to building websites. That's why Astra has given us a whole bunch of site templates that we can import really easily. I'll show you how to do that. We have a big notification right here asking us if we want to install starter site templates. So we can click on that link, or if this notification does not appear for you, go to Astra Options. On the right hand side, we have the same call to action and this one right here, which is not always there. Click on the Install Importer Plugin link. That's installing the plugin and activating it. And once that's installed and activated, we can choose the page builder, our page builder of choice. Gutenberg, which is built into WordPress. Elementor, which has a great free version as well as a page version. Beaver Builder, which as of this recording is a paid page builder only, and Brizzy has both a free and a paid version. I'm gonna choose Elementor in this case, and then click on Next. Now we see all kinds of great looking templates. The ones that say Agency at the top, you have to have the Agency bundle with Astro to get that one, that's the paid bundle. If we click on Free up here, we will see only the free themes, or free starter sites, and there's a whole ton of them. So some of these might be exactly what you want or very close to what you want and all you have to do is tweak some things and you've got a site online. I really like this first one that I saw, this tea company, this organic store right here. If we hover over it, we see a preview of it. It more than likely has WooCommerce as the store functionality. So I'm gonna click on this one and import it. You wanna keep all these boxes checked if it's your first time installing or importing a site to your site. Then click on import site. Now it's going to go through and import everything. We're just going to pause this video and come back when it's done. Now it's all done. We can click on view site here or up here or down here to view our site. There's a lot of options for that. And we have this beautiful looking site imported using the Elementor page builder. And we can start editing this site pretty much immediately. And it's, like I said, a beautiful looking site. And it's got all these pages as well. Home, all products, about, contact, and account. And these pages have been built out for you even product pages and individual products imported using the WooCommerce plugin. It's fantastic. So all we really have to do is just go into the back end and replace things and we have our site completed. Now something very important to understand about Astra is how fast it is. I've linked to a video in the card up above and the description down below where I've speed tested all the most popular themes for WordPress, including Astra, and Astra is one of the fastest. And it's important because the faster your site is, the fewer people will bounce off your site and leave because it's slow loading and you even get a little bit of an SEO bump because search engines, especially Google, like to see fast sites because it's better for user experience. 
So check out that video if you want to see how fast Astra is. So I'm going to head back into the back end. Then I'm going to show you how to replace the site we just imported, just in case you don't like it. So let's go back to Appearance, Astra Options, Starter Sites. Let's click on Free, and let's pick a different one. Let's pick this Pet Services one. Click on Preview, and make sure that this box down here is checked. Delete previously imported site. Warning, selecting this option will delete data from your current site. Choose this option only if this is intended. In this case it is. But if you already have a site built out and you don't want to lose the data, don't choose this option. I'm gonna choose it just to show you how to replace a site. So I've chosen it there. Click on the big blue button. I'm gonna pause while it does its work and I'll be back in just a minute. It's all done. Click on view site and we have the new site right here. And it's very, very nice. And again, this is an Elementor template. And the footer is Astra, and the navigation menu at the top is Astra. And there we have it. I'm gonna switch this back to the organic site that I had a moment ago, because this one does not have an e-commerce component, whereas the other one does. So I'm just gonna pause this video while I import this site again, and I'll be back in just a minute. Now that we have this demo site back, let's head into the customizer by going to either customize right up here or back into the dashboard and then Appearance and Customize. Now in here, we have all the options, not all of them actually, but we have a whole bunch of options related to the Astra theme. There are some options on post and page editor pages as well, which we'll see a little later, but the vast majority of the options are located right in these menus right here. We're gonna start by going over the global options. These are gonna be site-wide changes that we make in here. So if we go to global, we can change our typography, our colors, our container, and our buttons. If we go to typography and then base typography, we can change the base typography. So currently Open Sans is the font for most of the site. If we change this to something like Oregano, we will see our menu system change to this script-like font. The subheader here changed, this headline did not. And if we go put this back to Open Sans, we see all the locations, all the fonts go back to Open Sans wherever it can be affected by this change. And the font size is how big the font is. So if we want it to be bigger, we can make it bigger. Let's make it 20. Now it's quite large. We can also make it different sizes on different devices. Right now we're changing the font size on desktop, which is indicated by this desktop screen. If you click on there, it goes to tablet. This will be the font size on tablet. So let's make this 25. See how big it is. It gets quite large. Maybe that's a little too big for tablets. Maybe not, maybe that's just what you want. Either way, you can change the size here. And for mobile devices, like phones, you can change the size here. 25 is probably a little big. Let's make this 15. And it fits in much more nicely. And that way we can change these font sizes on a per device basis. Let's go back to the desktop. We can change the weight of the font to be extra bold, for example. Now it's all extra bold. This looks a little comical. I wouldn't suggest you make all these fonts extra bold. So I'm gonna change this back to normal. And also I'm gonna click on to the blog. I have a few blog posts that I made and all these changes affect the blog post as well. So if we make this extra bold, all this text is extra bold and it looks kind of silly. If we go right into the blog post, we see that all the content is super bold. It looks silly. So I'm gonna put this back to normal. We can also use text transform to make it either capitalized, uppercase, or lowercase. Capitalized means every word is gonna be capitalized. Uppercase means every word is gonna be uppercase. That's like you're yelling, the whole blog post is being yelled out. Lowercase means no capital letters. And then none just takes whatever you wrote. So if you wrote a capital right here, it keeps it as capital. You wrote the rest lowercase, keeps it as lowercase, and so on. So none or default, are good options for that. Line height is the space between the lines. Increase the line height, we have more space between lines. Paragraph margin bottom is the space below a paragraph. This is a paragraph ending right here. If we give it more space, then we can really see the change in paragraph. We can really f define where the paragraphs are. Click on this arrow, it goes back to what it was. I think the settings as they are here are quite nice. Whenever you make changes, you wanna make sure you click publish. If you do not publish, your work is not saved. There is an autosave feature, but it may not have gathered your most recent changes before something bad happens, like the browser tab closing or, or something. So you always wanna make sure you're publishing as you're making changes. Let's head back out of here and go to headings. 
This is another type of typography focusing just on the headings. You can see one right here. The font for the heading is Meriwether. If we change it to metal, for example, we will see this font style change. And there it is. I thought metal would be quite a bit thicker, a little more aggressive, but it's quite dainty and nice. And that's how we change our font families for our headings. And our headings are throughout the site. If we head back to the blog, we have our blog archive here, which lists all the blogs. So the heading is changed there and there. And if we go back to the home page, it possibly changed the ones that were not not the paragraph text. Like these headings right here have just been changed. These are headings. So if I change this to Milonga, we see those are changed. So we can change our headings in that way. And we also have the weight changes and text transform changes as we saw earlier. And we can change the size for specific headings. This one right here is more than likely an H1 tag, meaning it's the most important heading on the page. If we change the font size right here, it'll make that bigger. We can see grow as I'm pushing up. And we can see it shrink as well. And as before, we have the option to change the size for desktop, tablet, and phone by clicking here. We can see a preview of it. It's quite large on the phones. So let's make this 15. That's a little too small. Let's make it not that much. There, 32. Looks quite nice. And that only changes the size for the mobile phone if you're on the mobile phone setting. So that's awesome. I'm at the desktop. So we can change the heading sizes from heading one through to heading six, which is the last heading tag. And down here we see we have more options available in Astra Pro. Pretty much every single menu you dig into in the customizer, we have more options using Astra Pro. And Astra Pro is powerful. You don't need it. You can build great websites without it, but it is awesome. And if you do want to get Astra Pro, make sure you subscribe to my channel and check out the Astra Pro playlist where I detail how to use a lot of the features in Astra Pro. And there's a link in the description down below to buy Astra Pro. It is an affiliate link, which means that I get a small commission when you buy through that link. It does not make it more expensive for you to buy it. It's just that Astra gives me a commission for sending you to them. So if you do buy through that link, thank you very much. It helps me keep making these awesome videos for free. So let's head back out of headings and go into colors, base colors. Here we set the theme colors that are found throughout the theme. You notice a lot of greens in here. We have a lot of greens in the site, as we see here. So if I check or if I change the text color to say orange, we find the text here is now orange. And this text is orange. This is all orange. If we go to the blog, we're going to see a whole lot more orange. All this text is orange. So let's change that back to what it was, which was 333. Now, the theme color being green, we have a lot of green all over the place. Let's change this to yellow so we can see what is being changed. So not that guy. Let's click into this blog post. Nothing here has been changed to yellow. Let's go back to home. Not a whole lot in this theme being affected by the theme color. I think the sale icon might have been affected by it. Let's change it to red. Yeah, so the sale icon is affected by it. Really depends on which site template you import or how you set up your site when you've custom built it as to which colors here affect what parts of the site. So sometimes you have to change a color and then look through the site to see what's changed, especially when you import them like we're doing right now. So let's get this green back on there. I quite like this green color. Our link color is green, which means that a lot of the links are in green. For example, this cart link right here. If we change this to red, our cart is now red. If we go to the blog, we have these links that were formerly green here, now are red. And we also have our link hover color, which we can see is green. We can change that to yellow, whatever other color we want. And that will change the hover color that does not affect the hover color for the menu. We'll see that happening in just a minute. However, it did make it red for the blog area, not for pages. If we go to any page, we see the color is green instead of red. On the blog, it's red. We'll get into why that is in just a minute because you can customize this header area very specifically depending on which page the header is being shown on. More on that in a little bit. Let's change these back to green, all our link colors. We can add a background color to the whole website. Not a huge fan of this option, but it's here. I'm not going to be able to see it on the home page much, but if we go to the blog, 
we see now have a red background for all the blog content. Don't like that much, but it's a good option if you want to have that. Background image. We can select an image. Let's put this dog walking image in the back. Can't see too much of it, but we can see it's there. And we have some more image options. When we add this in, click on more settings right here. And we have a bunch of image options to set those up. Quite often what you want to do is have a pattern in the back. You wouldn't usually have an image like this. Let's just zoom out. We see our dog right here. We see it's repeating. So we have these options that are really small now. If we choose cover, the image covers the whole area and just stays within that image. And the repeat, no repeat means it won't be repeating. But in that way, we can have the image just appear once and have it stretch really big if we wanted to. But like I said, a pattern is a great option to have back there. Images like this are not perfect for that. Remove that image. Let's click on Publish just to make sure we saved our changes. Always be saving your changes. Let's go to Container. This is the website itself. This is what contains the website. Right now, the container width is 1,200. If I zoom out again, the container you can't really see unless you're zoomed out. So this is the width of the container. As we increase this width, we see the width of all this content increases. Let's change it back to 1,200 by clicking this arrow. And the layout right now is boxed, meaning everything's inside of a box. Now, if we change this to content boxed, it's the same thing. But if we had a sidebar, it would look a little different. In fact, let's turn the sidebar on. Let's just head out the sidebar. Let's make it a right sidebar. Okay, our sidebar is on. Now, if we go back into global container content boxed, we see just the content is boxed. If we have boxed, then we have boxes around the sidebar widgets as well. If we go to full width, everything's full width. There is no boxed area. It's just one background, and that's it's the entire width of the page. I quite like this option. It's very clean. What I don't like is full width stretched because the bigger your screen is, the more stretched it is, and it just looks weird. It looks like your, your site's messed up, frankly. Website's not supposed to look like that. So I prefer to have full width contained. So it looks quite neat, quite nice. I'm going to zoom in again. And now we also have these same options for our page layout, a blog post layout, archives layout, and the WooCommerce layout. So you can choose these options for any one of these. You can get very granular, which is awesome. I'm going to click on Publish and keep that as it is. All we did was change it to Full Width Contained. Let's get back out of here. Let's go to Buttons. This is where we can change button color and button borders. Popular place to have buttons is at the bottom of this page, we have our Comment button. Click on Colors, change the background color to be blue, for example. We can have a hover color, which is currently green. Now we've changed our commenting button. We can add borders. I find these borders only affect the buttons in the menu, so they're not going to make any changes here. So I'm just going to revert back to our green color for the hover, or sorry, for the background. And I'll show you how to add a button to the menu right up here, and then changing these colors will affect that. So let's go back to, or go back out and go to header, go to primary menu, and choose the last item is currently WooCommerce. Let's make it a button. Now we have a button appearing right up there. Now when we come back to global and we go to buttons and we change our colors, the color affects that button. As we see now it's red and the border also affects that button. Horizontal padding affects the button. Vertical padding affects that button. And right now this button is ridiculous. Don't make your button like this. I'm just showing you all the different options that apply to the button. So let's undo those changes. And I'm going to take that button back off because I prefer the WooCommerce options on there. Primary menu, WooCommerce, which gives us a little shopping cart. And this number updates as you add items to your shopping cart. And this list right here, no products in cart, this updates as you have items in your cart. That's why I like to have that one if you have an e-commerce store. Let's back out of here. We've covered all the global options now. Next up is the site identity, which is the logos and things like that. So click on site identity. We have our logo right here, organic store. We can have a different logo for retina devices and a different logo for mobile devices. So I'm going to change this logo to mine. It's going to upload files. I'm going to drag and drop 
bunch of my logos in here because we use various ones for various things. Let's choose this one, which is just a regular logo. You can crop it to change the size if you want to. I'm not going to. Click on skip cropping. I have my logo up here. Now if I choose different logo for Retina devices, I can upload a different logo that's a larger, usually two times as large. And that provides a higher resolution option for devices that require higher resolutions. So we have that option there. We can also have a different logo for mobile devices. So I'm just going to choose this blue one, just so you see it's different. So right now we're not on a mobile device, but if we click on this little screen here, this desktop screen, and switch to mobile, we see the logo is now blue. And for the phones, also blue. These options are quite large, we'll fix those in a minute, but we can see that it switches out the logo for the different device types, which is pretty sweet. You don't have to do that, but it's an option. And if the logo you import is too big for whatever reason, you can change the size by dragging and dropping right here. And so this change here will affect desktop devices. By default, it's 120 for tablets. We can make it bigger if we want to. And by default, it's 120 for phones. We also make it bigger or smaller if we need to. And that's how we can change the logo width. Super simple. The site icon is the logo that appears in the corner of the tab. Right now it's a globe. That's the default option when there is no site icon in Google Chrome anyway. If you click on site icon, we can upload our own. Usually this is 512 by 512 pixels, but all it has to be is bigger than 16 by 16 and square. Those are the two requirements. I'm gonna skip cropping. And now we have our site icon right up here. Let's go back to our desktop. And down here we have the option to display our title. If we click on display site title, it will display our site title, which currently is learning to build. Let's change this to my cool website. Updates it immediately. We can have this in line with the logo if we want to, or not even displayed because we really don't need it there because we have a logo there. There's also something called the site tagline, which can appear below the site title. Let's add the site title back in. It'll appear below the site title if we have the site title on and we can change its text right in here. I'm gonna not display either of those because we have a nice logo there. Why do we need those? We don't. And also for my Retina logo, I see I have this little error, these little gray lines in here. So I'm just gonna remove that and go back to this logo. It's a little blurry because it's not a Retina logo, but for some reason I didn't do that Retina logo very well. So I'm just gonna keep that one. Click on Publish to make sure our changes are saved. Let's go back out of here and go to Primary Header. This is where we can change the layout of our header area. By default, it's aligned logo left, menu right. We can also have logo top, menu below it, so the stacked version, or logo right, menu left. Most commonly, you will see this option for desktop. You probably usually see the stacked option for mobile, and I'll show you how to set that in just a minute. So the width for the content is either the content width or full width. The content width is the width of the container. If I zoom out again, we see our Logos on the left side of our content and the WooCommerce option is pretty much on the right hand side of the content. If we change this to full width, it's gonna stretch the whole width of the screen. No matter what zoom level you are, what your screen size is, it's always gonna be on the outer edges. So I'm gonna keep mine as content width. And we have a border on the bottom, right here. There's a little gray line right here. We can set that to zero and not have a border anymore. If you have a different background color for your primary header, then it makes sense. If you don't have a different color for it, then it's kind of silly, not have a border. So we have one pixel border here and we can give it a color, give it our theme green color if we want to, or any other color that you want. I'm gonna put it back to what it was, this gray color. And then for the mobile layout, let's choose our mobile design here and have the stacked option by clicking on this. Now we have our logo top, WooCommerce there, menu bottom, click on the hamburger menu, and there we go. Same thing for phones, or we can have them side by side, which is quite common doing it that way. Click on the desktop to go back to desktop, and click on publish to make sure we've saved our changes. Go back one menu level and check out the primary menu, which is this menu right up here. There are a substantial amount of options for the menu. First option, disable menu. Click on that and the menu disappears. 
boom, gone. The only thing that's left is our last menu item, whatever we choose that to be, which can also be none, and that'll leave us with nothing up there. And you may be wondering what kind of website doesn't want a menu system at the top. Quite often, landing pages or long form sales pages don't have menu systems. And so you'd have none for that. If you have a website that's just like uh, myebook.com, you could have just a sales page, but you wouldn't want a menu system at the top. So then you disable this. You may also be using a page builder to create your menus, in which case you wouldn't want a menu here. Page builders do automatically turn off the WordPress default menus, which is what this is, but sometimes maybe they don't. So you can turn it off here manually if you need to. So let's turn this menu back on. And as a last menu item, we can also have a search bar or a search widget. Click on that. You can type in a search and search the website. You can also have a button, which we saw earlier. This button can be linked to wherever you want. The button settings are right down below here. We have our text. You can change it to click here. And this could be a link to wherever we want. And the button style is a theme button. We can click this to customize, which takes us back to where we were under the global settings for our color and our border. Let's go back in the header, primary menu. Let's change this to HTML or text. You could have a register button that's custom input using HTML. Kind of silly. I don't know why you'd want to have a button here because you can just choose button. That's a lot more flexible doing it that way. But you can also add other things in the HTML. You could even just have a regular link that's outside of the menu. So it looks like a menu link, but it's not in the menu. So you can do that if you wanted to. You can also add a widget. This is very similar to sidebar widgets, which you see right here in the sidebar. You can have whatever widget you can have in the sidebar, you can put up here as well. And then we have the WooCommerce option because WooCommerce is installed. If you don't have WooCommerce installed, you won't see this option. We can also hide the last item on the mobile menu if we want to by clicking on this. This makes sense a lot of times. So if we go into mobile, we have our WooCommerce widget, which makes sense to have on mobile if we use that one. But if we have, for example, a widget and that widget is large and it really gets in the way on mobile, we can choose to turn that off by clicking on this option here. And then that turns it off on tablet and on phones. We can also take the last item out of the menu in mobile. So if we go back to tablets, we have our menu here and our widget here. If we click on this, it puts the widget into the menu. So here's our add widget. And this makes sense in some cases, not in others. So we have the option to take it out if we need to. And then on phones, it also has it right in there. So I'm going to set this back to our WooCommerce. See, it doesn't make a lot of sense in this case to have the WooCommerce widget in the menu. So we can take it out. Makes more sense to have it out. Let's go back to desktop. We have some sub menu options. We have a drop down right here under account, my account and cart. We can have a different animation for this. We can slide down, which is what it does now. We can have slide up. When you hover it over, it slides up. And we can also have it fade in when you hover like this. They're all pretty similar because this is a small area. So the animation change is not that apparent, but it is there. The container border, we can see that there is a one pixel border. We can have this be something crazy like 10 pixels. Click on this link to make everything the same. And now we have a crazy border, 10 pixels. It's huge. We also have a menu divider, which we see in the middle. We uncheck that. That divider between my account and cart is gone. We can put it back in by checking that box. We can change the color of the border. If we want to have our green, see if it's still my clipboard, it is. We have the green border. We can also make the divider green. Nice theme colors to change this back to one. Sorry, one there. We could also have different border sizes for different parts. Click on this link to make sure it's unlinked. And you could just have five pixels for the bottom and one for all the rest. And it looks like this. I kind of like that look. I'm going to keep that bottom border as five pixels. And then we can carry on to the mobile menu. Let's click on mobile and see how we can affect this mobile menu. This is quite a common setup for mobile menu. Just a hamburger icon. We have a mobile menu here. Fantastic, super simple. We can change the color by changing the toggle button color right here. So if red is a little too aggressive, we can have our 
customary green, or not customary, but for the starter site, green is one of the main colors, so we can have our green color here. We can define the breakpoint. The breakpoint defines when the hamburger icon appears. This is best illustrated outside of the customizer. So I'm gonna publish, I'm gonna open this site in a new tab, and we have our main menu here. Let's just make this a new window, actually. We have our main menu up here. If we shrink down the size of the site at some point, oh, we're wrapping, the menu's wrapping here, that's not good. I have to fix that. And at some point we go, boop, we have a hamburger menu, which is our regular mobile menu. And our logo disappeared for some reason. We'll have to look into that. As we go farther down, we're on phone size now. Logos here, it's good. There's a menu, everything works. And the breakpoint is where these changes happen. The biggest breakpoint is from this full-fledged menu to the hamburger menu. And then if we change the breakpoint, the mobile menu appears at a different time, a different width for the site. So let's change this to a huge number, like 3,800. Click on publish. Come back to our little demo here, refresh this page. Now we have the mobile menu appearing where we didn't before. And as we scale it bigger, it's still mobile, still mobile. In fact, my screen's not big enough before that changes to our regular desktop menu. So let's change this to, say, 2300. Publish, refresh out here, still not big enough. Let's make this 1200. Refresh out here, now our menu's back. Shrink it down, it appears at this stage now. So that's what the breakpoint does. I usually keep mine as default. There's often no reason to need to change that. We can also add a label to the menu. By default, it's just a hamburger icon. A lot of people don't know what that means. You can type menu in here. And now people know, oh, that's the menu. And it has a side benefit of having a bigger surface area. So if people have big thumbs or small phones, they'll be able to touch that menu a lot easier if there's a label. We can change the button toggle style. Currently it's on fill. We could have it on outline. We can have it on minimal. Really depends on your preference. I think because we have this WooCommerce as an outline, I think it's quite nice having this as an outline as well. So they look similar. The button or the border radius, sorry, we can make it a pill shape or anything in between from sharp edges, rounded edges, all the way to pill. And if we don't have a menu label, we'll have a circle. There we go, nice circle menu if we wanna have it there. I'm gonna put the board menu back in and change it back to default, which is just a little bit of a corner. And the drop-down target affects submenus. Likely we have one in this menu. It is the contact. If you have it set to icon, people have to touch right on this icon to make it open. We click there, it opens a submenu. Click there again, it closes it. If we just touch on account, menu closes. That's probably not the desired effect for most people. If we change this to link, then they can click anywhere on this area and open the submenu. I think this is the desired effect or the most commonly used way. So I almost always have this on link for the drop down target. And that brings us to the end of our mobile and desktop menu options. Quite a few of them. Click on publish, make sure we save our work. Back out of here, transparent header is the next option. This is a really cool option because it allows you to create a basically a different menu for a different part of your site. And unfortunately, right now, we don't have the best home page or best any page for a transparent header. If we go back to home, we see we have mostly white. For a transparent header, what you want to have is a big image as the header background image. So I'm just going to edit the home page to put an image in the background of the header so we can see the transparent header option does. because It's a pretty cool feature to have. So I edited this Elementor homepage to add this nice image in the background. If you wanna know how I did that, there's a lot of videos on my channel to help you with Elementor. That's not what this video is about. So now that we have this nice image here, we can add a transparent header. Right now we have a non-transparent header, which means it's this separate block at the top, white background, or whatever color background you choose, but it's a separate block. If we choose on enable on complete website, we have our header move over top of the background image and the background image move up behind it, so it's a transparent header. And it is a really cool option. And currently, we chose enable on complete website. We're gonna change that in a little bit. First, we're gonna turn this on. We're gonna customize the settings 
Then I'll show you how to use this just on one page if you want to, in this case, the home page. So we can also choose to disable on various pages here if we want to. You can check and uncheck these as you see fit. Currently, it's enabled only on desktop, and that makes sense. We're going to keep it as that. If we choose desktop and mobile, if we go to mobile, we see it doesn't really work. It doesn't look that great if we do it that way. So I'm just going to choose desktop. And we have a different logo for a transparent header that's currently selected. And I'm going to select image for that. Let's pick this blue one again. There we go, this nice blue one. Let's make it nice and big. And now we'll know when we're on the transparent header because we have a different color logo. You can have a different logo for retina devices, again. You can also have a border at the bottom or not. When I use transparent headers, I usually don't like to have a border at the bottom. So I'm going to set this to zero. If you do have a border, you can change the color here. I think I missed some options. I did not. Let's scroll down, background colors. So we can add a background color to our menu if we want to. Select the color here, and we can make this gray, but then we have to add opacity, otherwise we just have the regular menu we had before. So it's a little bit see-through there, but it, that will help you be able to read your menu options depending on what your color scheme is for the menu options. We can change this based on our device. Different colors for different devices if you want to. So as you've seen throughout this tutorial, I quite like clicking on this little icon to change devices and customize for different devices. And you should as well, because you never know what device is coming to your site. And you want to make sure the experience is great, no matter which device lands on your site. The site title, you can customize the colors, hover colors, but we don't have that turned on, so we don't need that. The menu system, which is this menu up here, we can change the colors specifically for the transparent header. This will be different possibly, depending on what you change, different than your other menus on the site. So I'm going to choose for the link color, I'm just going to choose orange, just to make sure it's clear that it's different. So when you look at it in a minute, you'll say, oh wow, that's really different. You can even give it a background, just to the menu if you want to. I'm not going to use that option. For the hover, let's keep the green, you know what, I'm going to change the green hover. Let's change it to blue. There we go, blue on hover. We can also change the submenu. Hover over it, we have our submenu options here. We can change its styling right in here if we want to, normal and hover. And we can also change the content, which is any content that's in the header. For example, if we make this purple, it changes our text right here as purple. Or if we had the HTML widget option or another widget option here, it could potentially change the colors depending on what's in there, what the content is in there. So let's publish this. And now, actually before I publish it, let's turn this off, as in don't enable it on the complete website. Click on publish. And now if we exit out of here and go to all pages, our home page, and on the right hand side, we have the option at the very bottom to turn on transparent headers. We can use the customizer setting, which will be the default for all pages on your site, or we can choose enable. And in this case, since we've turned it off as the customizer setting, we've enabled it specifically here, it will only be enabled on the home page. So let's click on update. Let's view our cool website. Now we see our transparent header up here with our blue, orange menu, purple in the content. And if we go to any other page, it'll be back to what we had before, before we started playing with the transparent header. And that's how we can customize our headers for different applications, which is pretty awesome. Let's go back into the customizer, we're clicking on customize. And now we have completed our header work. So next let's go to breadcrumbs. Breadcrumbs apply specifically to blog posts. So let's go to blog and it may actually take effect here. Let's change position from none to inside header. And here we have our breadcrumb appearing. And like I said, you usually only see this on blog posts. So I would disable it everywhere else. Disable on the home page, disable on search. I'd keep it on the archive, which is what we're on right now. Disable on single pages. I'll keep it on for single posts, because that's a post. Disable on singular, maybe keep it on 404s. And these breadcrumbs basically help people figure out where they are on your site. And it also helps search engines figure out where they are on your site. So it's good for SEO. You can change the separator. Maybe you want to have a plus icon in there or a forward slash. or whatever you want, whatever you want for a separate, you can put it in there. You can line to the left, 
you can center it, you can set it to the right. And I currently have it inside the header, it's not commonly there. It's usually after the header, or most commonly before the title. It isn't here for our archive. Let's click into the site. Here it appears at the top. If it doesn't appear for whatever reason, make sure you check and uncheck options on the left. So if we, for example, disable on single post, it's not gonna appear here. So we wanna make sure that that's not checked. So if it's not appearing where you think it should be, you can switch or change these settings to see whether or not that'll help it appear. Spacing, I wanna add some spacing down or below it because it's a little close to our image. Boom, easily done. You can change it for different devices using this icon here as we always do. Our colors, we can change them quite easily using these options. We can add a background color if we want to. I'm not going to in this case. We can change the text color. We can change the link color to whatever we want. And we can also change the separator color, make that red. And that applies apparently to the text color as well because we don't have a text color defined. So we want to define each option to make sure the colors are how you want them to be. There we go. That's back to more or less default. And that's that. So that is the breadcrumb options. I often have these on, like I said, on blog posts, not usually throughout the site, just on blog posts. Let's go back out of here and go to blog. This is where we can define how our blog archive and our single post appear. We start with the archive. We have our post structure. Let's go back to the blog archive, which is this page here. We see we have our featured image first, which is first on the list on the left. If we want to turn that off, let's click on the eyeball. Featured images gone or put the title first, just drag and drop it up there. I like that look much better, having the title first on the blog archive. I don't mind on the blog post having the image first, but on the blog archive where it lists all your blog posts, I prefer to have the title first. We can also change our metadata, we can add our publish date and our tags. There are no tags on this post, so it just has leave a comment, category, author, date, which are the ones you see here. You can reorganize these as you see fit leave a comment often at the very end. We can change the content width, which we saw earlier as well. We have to zoom out again to see this happening. So the content width is currently 1200. We can make it wider or thinner. Depends on your site design and what you want to do. Zoom back in. We can also choose how much text appears here. Right now it's set to just be an excerpt. We can also have it as the full content which is the entire post appearing in this archive page. I've seen that for some websites, you don't see that very often, but it does happen. You can change the size of the archive title right here. Currently there is no title, so that won't affect anything. You can change the size of the post titles in this option here. So maybe we want this to be 50 pixels. It's quite large, put it back down to 30. That's a nice size. We can change it for different devices as well. If you haven't noticed by now, Astra has a huge number of options, which is awesome. And for a lot of them, you can make them device specific. It's just a great theme to use. Let's click into the blog post. And then on the left-hand side here, go to single post. And now this defines the blog post. You can change the content width like we saw before many times. You can change the order of things just like on the archive page. It's up to you how you wanna do that. And the typography, the size for the page title you can define right here. Let's back out of here, and now we go to the sidebar. The sidebar is currently on the right. We can change its position to be on the left. You can also have no sidebar. Depends on how you wanna do it. And I also have a video which shows you how to have a fly-in sidebar. There's a button on the right side of the page that people click on, and that opens a sidebar. That uses Elementor. I've linked to that in the card up above in the description down below if you wanna check that out. And I'm gonna keep it on the right sidebar. For this tutorial, you can define where sidebars appear. You can have it on pages. Usually I don't want it there. I'm gonna choose no sidebar. I'm gonna have it on blog posts, which is here. If we change this to no, it doesn't appear here. Put that back to default, which is the default chosen right here. Archives has a default as well. WooCommerce, no sidebar, single product. We're gonna have no sidebar for the single product. And the sidebar width, we can define right here using this little slider. 
how wide you have it depends on what sort of content you have here. I wouldn't recommend you have it much smaller than 30%. That's usually a pretty good size for the sidebar. If you go too small, there's just not enough space for anything. So I usually have mine around 30, and that's quite nice like that. Let's go back out of here and head into the footer. We have a number of footer options for defining our footers down here. Go to footer widgets. We currently have none set. We can turn this on and we can add footer widget areas. This footer is created with Elementor, but we can create a very similar one using these footer area widgets. We just add widgets in as we do with our sidebar. I'll show you that in just a minute. You can have a top border size or top border if you want. Change the size here. Not going to have that. Top border color if you want to have it. Background color. I usually have the background color be similar to the footer color on the bottom, just like they've done with their Elementor footer. So you can change the color of the background right here, or you can add an image in the back. Let's just put this one in there. Turn the color off. Now we have the image in the back. Pretty straightforward. We have image settings. We can have it repeat, center, center, contain, no repeat, cover, various settings to make it appear how you want it to. You can also make it fixed, meaning when you scroll, the image stays put, also known as parallax. That's a cool effect. Or you have it scroll with the site or put it to inherit, which means whatever the parent element has, that's the setting it has. I'm going to take that off of there. And I'm going to show you where we can add widgets to this. So let's publish and then click back to leave the footer widgets. And then there's a widgets section down here. Click on there. And we have here footer widget area one, two, three, and four, which coincide to these one, two, three, and four. And footer bar section two, which is the right side over here on the, at the very bottom. So we can click into here and click on add widget and we can start adding widgets. Quite commonly in the left side footer, we have an image. So let's just click on image to add the image widget. Let's add our logo, put that right in there. And then we're going to add a little text blurb below that. Add the text widget. Let's add some words here. This is WP Learning Lab. Welcome. And usually there's a bit of a longer blurb there, but maybe that's the blurb on the left. And then after that, maybe some social icons. Astra provides a social icons widget, which is right right here astro social profiles you can easily add social icons with this widget just click on add item let's call this one facebook give it a fake link or a hashtag look up facebook let's put this one in there and then we can add another one let's add youtube use that one quite a bit you're probably watching this video on youtube look up youtube Get a similar looking filled in icon. And you can add as many as you want. And you can customize their settings here. You can use their official colors or have a custom color that fits in better with your brand. I'm just gonna keep it as official right now. I'm gonna save what we did here first so they appear. Then we can adjust some of these things and see what happens. Click on apply to make them appear. And there they are. They are quite small. We can display the title of the profile, which is the name that we wrote in. So it says Facebook and YouTube. You might want to do that. If you do add the titles, I recommend you stack the alignment instead of making it inline because it looks much better vertically stacked with all the words in there. We can make the icons bigger. Let's make them 75 pixels. That might be quite large. That is quite large. Let's make them 25. There, that's a more reasonable size. I'm going to change it from the official color to Let's see, blue. Background color I'm going to keep. Hover color I'm going to change to this blue and then make it a little bit lighter. So when you hover, you see there's a difference. Click on apply. Now they are blue. When you hover, it gets a little bit, a little bit lighter. I'm going to take the, the names off. And we have some fancy social icons. As you can see, pretty easy to add them, easy to customize them and just add all the ones you have in these widgets if you want them there. 
Footer widget number two, let's just add a menu. Let's just add navigation menu, call this sitemap, and just put our primary menu in there. There it is. Nice little sitemap of our site. Footer widget area number three, why don't we add a calendar, maybe a calendar of events. And footer widget area number four, we can add, just add a video. Let's just get a video from my YouTube channel. Let's see, a recent one. One you probably want to check out as well is which theme is the fastest? Published just three days ago as of this recording. And then we click on add video. Astra also features in that video, so you definitely want to check that out. Click on add video, click on insert from URL paste in the URL, let's remove that timestamp, add it, and there we have a video playing in the footer. You can even have two, because it looks like there's enough space vertically beside this calendar. There's a number of plugins you can install from the WordPress plugin repository, where you can add things like Facebook like boxes, other social media widgets you can add in there, um, all kinds of stuff. I can't, I can't even think of what they have. There's, there's so much stuff you can put into these widgets in the footers. Check out the plugin repository. There's a lot of options. Now the very bottom widget area, we can also easily customize. We go head back out here and go to footer and footer bar. We currently have these side by side. So we have this section with the copyright info and these links on the right. We can also stack them like so. And we can also have no bottom footer bar if we want that. But I usually have it and I usually have them side by side like this. Section one is the section on the left. You can have text, a widget, or a footer menu. You can change the content of the copyright here. Take out the word copyright. There we go. Section number two, you can have nothing here if you don't want to. Or you can have the same options, text, widget, or a menu. I usually have a menu. I put things like privacy policy, terms of service, refund policy. I put that kind of legalese stuff into this footer menu. That's usually what I do. What you put in there is up to you. And I'll show you how to assign the footer menu in just a minute. We can adjust the width. We can have the content down here be full width, which again, if we zoom out, is the full width of the site, which doesn't make a lot of sense visually. Let's zoom back in. I usually stick to content width. You can have a border at the top. You can change the size by dragging this or entering a number of pixels in here. You can change the color using this option here. You can change the background color and the content color of this footer area. I'm going to take off this border. What I usually have is a darker color for this footer area than I have for these footer widgets. And in fact, for this theme, it doesn't even make sense to have these footer widgets. I just want to show you how they work. But the Elementor template has its own footer area right here. So it doesn't make a lot of sense to have this footer section. But if you want to change the color of the very bottom background, just go to background and pick a different color. Super simple, that's a pretty annoying color. Put that back to default. And then click on Publish to save our work. To add a menu on the right hand side over here, let's head back out here. Let's go to Menus. Let's go to Create a New Menu. Let's call it the Footer Menu. And Menu Location, I'm gonna check Footer Menu right there. And I'm going to add an item. I'm gonna add Privacy Policy, like I mentioned, terms of service and refund policy. Let's add those three. Click back out here and we have our footer menu right here. We have to change the colors and things. Let's click on this pencil. We see the footer menu is assigned. We can assign a different one if we want to here. And to change the colors, we have to go into footer, footer bar, go to the very bottom, click on content. Let's make the text color white and the link color, white, that'll be the link color that we see down there, make that white, and on hover, we want to make the hover color, let's make it blue. And that's how we change the colors down there. And that is what we do in the footer with the Astra theme. If we go back to our top menu, we also have WooCommerce. This is only enabled when you have WooCommerce installed. So let's click on there. We have a store notice option. This allows you to add a message 
at the top of your store. If we go to all products, this is part of our store. We can have in here this message basically saying we're testing. Click on here to enable it and there's our message. This would often be used for a vacation message or maybe a current sale message with a coupon or something like that. So you can have that turned on quite easily. Our product catalog options allow us to define how the products appear in various places. The shop page, the category page, the default product sorting, that's on here, which you see up here in the top right. This is all built into WooCommerce. Astra is just giving us some options in the customizer to help us with the WooCommerce shop, but all this content is built into WooCommerce. We can have, for example, different numbers of columns. So let's make this four columns, and we have four columns. Super easy. We can have a different number of products per page. So right now we have nine. That makes sense when it's a three column structure, but for a four column structure, it doesn't. So maybe 12 is a better option for a four column structure. So we have a full row for the very last one. There are only 12 products on this site, so we don't have pagination at the bottom. If we change this to eight, we have two full rows on this page, and we have a page two. We click on there, it goes to our page two. We can change the order this text appears using our shop product structure. So maybe they want the category below the title. We can just drag and drop. Maybe ratings are most important. Let's put those to the top. So you can drag and drop and turn on the short description and add to cart as needed right here using those eyeballs. You can turn off any of these as well using the eyeballs. And that is how we can customize how our products appear on these product catalog pages. Under single product, if you have breadcrumbs appearing on your WooCommerce pages, they appear right here, right at the top. And it's helpful. I think they're helpful to have there because people then can go back to categories and see different products. But if you don't want to have it there, click on disable breadcrumb. That removes it. Simple. Go back out here. The product images, which you see right here. We can change the width of these images. I think they look quite nice. I'm not going to change them. Currently, they're one-to-one, -one, which means they're square. You can also have them be custom, so they're cropped to different sizes if you want to. And you can also have them uncropped, which shows the original upload size, which happens to be this perfect square size anyway. You gotta be careful with the uncropped because they could be quite large. Let's go back out to here, our cart page. We can enable upsells on our cart page. We can define those elsewhere. So let's just add a product to our cart and see if we can see what that looks like. Add to cart, we can't do that in here. Let's go out to the main site. Let's go to all products. Let's add this one to our cart. Now we have it in our cart. We can view the cart right here. And we don't have upsells enabled right now on the cart, or we don't have any setup on the cart, but we can because we turned on the upsell option right here. Let's go back, our checkout page. This is where we end up checking out. This is what the checkout page looks like right here. And we can turn on and off certain fields like the company name. Maybe for your site, that's not relevant. Maybe you sell tea. You don't need to have a company name. Or maybe you sell pencils and you like to have a company name. So that's optional. You can also make it required, depending what your needs are. You can have a second address line field be there or not. I quite often see it on order forms. Phone field can be required, optional, or hidden. Highlight required ones with an asterisk. This little red guy here, uncheck this box takes all the asterisks away. I usually keep them there because if people don't fill out those fields and they place order and it doesn't work, they might not know why. Whereas this asterisk is common knowledge that this asterisk means required. So people will know, oh, I missed this field. You can set a privacy policy page right here. We currently don't have one, but let's just pretend that contact is a privacy policy page and it adds a link right over here to the privacy policy. You can also have a note here for it. Our terms and conditions page don't have one, but let's pretend it's the about page. And that adds a link here as well, with the checkbox, which you check if you read the conditions. And if you haven't read them, you don't check it, and then your order won't go through. So we can set those quite easily using those drop downs. And that is the size of the WooCommerce options for the free Astra theme. One last quick thing I have to show you is the homepage settings, where you can set a homepage. You can set it to a static page, which is what we have, which is an actual page that you see here. You do that by clicking on static page, choose the page you want to set, and that becomes the page for the content. 
And then you want to set a posts page as well, which in my case is the blog. And that is where your blog posts appear. You can just create a brand new blank page, pick it from this drop down, and that's where your posts are going to appear. You can also choose your latest posts for the home page. Then those other two options go away, and we just have our blog page be the home page, which is commonly a blog, not a business website. So you have both options, super easy to switch back and forth. We can also add additional CSS. You can copy and paste it right into here or write it yourself if you know how, and you can change the design of the website by adding CSS right there, super easy. Click on Publish to save our work. And the last thing I want to show you, let's X out of here, is go back into the dashboard. If we go to Pages, Edit Any Page, we have these options on the right-hand side under Astro Settings. There's a sidebar option. You can overwrite whatever you set in the customizer or just use the customizer setting. Content layout, you can overwrite whatever you set in the customizer or use the customizer setting. This is on a page-by-page -page basis. You can do this. You can disable these sections listed here, again, on a page-by-page -page basis. Whatever you change here applies only to this specific page. Transparent header, you can apply just to the specific page if you want to. Under Posts, we have the same options. Let's go to Edit. Astro Settings, we see those same options right here. Super handy. And if you are interested in getting Astro Pro and you have the Astro Free plugin installed, head over to Appearance and then Astro Options, and you'll see a list this list right here of the Pro Astro options. I can't highlight it. Let me try from down here. There we go. This list right here. These are the Pro options. These are the things that will be added when you add Pro. And if you want to learn more about any one of these in particular, just click on Learn More for, say, the sticky header. And it goes to a help page and describes exactly what that sticky header does and what it is. Or you can check out the playlist for Astro Pro on my channel. There's a link in the description down below. And if you do want to get Astro Pro, please use the link in the description. It's an affiliate link. Astro sends me a small commission for referring you. Doesn't make it more expensive for you. Just that they send me a small commission, which helps me keep making these awesome videos for you and putting them out there for free on YouTube. So there you have all the options and features available to you in the free Astro theme. I encourage you to check it out. It's an awesome theme. I hope this video helps you. If you haven't done so yet, make sure you click subscribe and ring the bell so you don't miss any future videos. And next up is watching this video right up here where I show you how to build a complete website from zero, from scratch to something awesome using the Astro theme and the Brizzy page builder. And then watch this video down here where I show you how to make that new website ultra fast using WP Rocket. Until next time, my name is Bjorn Allpass from WP Learning Lab. Keep crushing it and I will see you in the next video.